Shalom. Uh, welcome to the Way of Truth and everybody here in the class. Everybody wave. Uh-oh. Wave. Hello. Scary bunch, aren't they? Yeah, it didn't break the camera. Well, maybe it tilted it a bit, but we're all here to study today. Acts, the Brit Hada Shah. And um, where's my mad monkey? Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Gary. Thank you for the gift. Okay, we are starting in Acts 13, 1, and we're going through Acts 16, 40, and this is going to be a good study because we're getting into some really interesting things today, and one thing we are going to talk about, which most men don't want to talk about, is the circumcision of the skin. Not just the circumcision of the spirit, but the circumcision of the skin. So we will get into that. It's not going to be right off the top, though, okay? Okay, are we ready to start? Any, anybody want to say anything before we get kicked off? No, no. Okay, here we go. We're in Acts 13, verse 1. And in the assembly that was at Antioch, there were certain prophets and teachers, both Barnabas and Shimon, who were called Niger, and Lucius of Cyrene and Manahem, who had been brought up with Herodes, the district ruler, and Shaul. So isn't that interesting mm -hmm. uh, that here we have one that is in the assembly, and he, Manahem, first time I've seen his name brought up, mm -hmm. and I really would like to learn a little bit more about him. But guys, one thing that we have always been so confused about is what is a prophet? It's one that speaks the word of Yah. He speaks the word of Yah, and listen, what's the word of Yah? It says, so he reveals the word of Yah. Now, in old times, we had prophets that Yah revealed his word to, and they brought those words. I'm going to tell you something. The life of a prophet was a lonely life, mm -hmm. and it was a bitter life, and most of them were killed. Where? In Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. They were killed because they, they would stone the prophets. They would kill them. Um, today, we, have, we, we still have people that will hear from Yah. And they may come to you with a word, but I'm going to tell you something. It's going to be very rare that you're, you're going to find someone smacking on a ham sandwich and come to you saying, Hey, God told me something to tell you today. <laughs> Bonnie, listen, what have we read? What is in Exodus? What does it say about uh, eating of pork or shrimp or anything that is not considered food? It, it makes you an abomination to Yah. So do you think he's going to reveal anything to you? He, he could. It's not saying he won't. He could. But guys, listen, if, if someone comes to you with a word, make sure it's someone who's walking the walk, okay? And it has to line up with the word. It has it to line up with says, the word. It touch not my anointed and do my prophet to no harm. Yes, it does. You know, it's very specific about that. Yes. You've got to be sure who the prophet is, that he's speaking the word of Yah and not the enemy. I still love my water. Did you get it? Did you get it? Sorry. <laughs> so... So I wanted to make sure that we know what a prophet is. Thank you so much, Bethany. What a prophet is, because we've got a lot of people today claiming to be prophets. And how many people did, have we heard say, oh, the world's going to end in the year 2018. Wait, what was it last time? 2012, mm -hmm. the year of the Mayan calendar. Guys, listen, these were the prophets. These are the old prophets, and they all did die, and they all did see corruption. Yes, sir. A true prophet, 100% of what he prophesies comes true. Thank you, sweetheart. Mm -hmm. ah. Yes, it will. It will come true. And um, that is true. That is true. Because it's his word. Yes. Have you seen any of the prophets that call themselves pro prophets today do that? Very few. Mm -hmm. Very few. So it's best that we just, you know, if you think you're, you've been given a time frame or, guys, listen, sometimes it's best to just hold that lip shut, not share it, all right? Okay. But, but listen, share the truth. We should be talking about the truth so much that it makes our teeth break. We should be mentioning his name so much that our teeth break. Isn't that what the word says? Mm -hmm. Chattering so much about him. Okay. And as they were doing service to the master and fasted, the set-apart spirit said, Separate unto me Barnabas and Shaul for the work to which I have called them. And then having fasted and prayed and having laid hands on them, they sent them away. So they, having been sent out by the set-apart spirit, went down to Seleucia, and from there they sailed to Cyprus. And having come into Salamis, they proclaimed the word of Elohim in the congregation of the Yahudim, and they also had Yochanan as an attendant. 
And having passed through all the island of Paphos, they found a certain magician, a false prophet, a Yehudi, whose name was Bar Yahoshua, who was with the proconsul Sergius Paulus, a man of understanding. And this man, having called for Barnabas and Shaul, earnestly sought to hear the word of Elohim. So we've got a lot of stuff here, right? So Seleucia and uh, Cyprus, these, these are what? Where are these? And who has Shaul been called to? He's been called to the Gentile nations, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So they've gone to um, Cyprus and Seleucia, but they have literally gone into the synagogues where the Yahudim are, are studying. And it's on Sabbath, and we're going to see that in just a little bit. Uh, so they have gone to the house of Israel. Because where did the house of Israel go? Everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> they went everywhere, no particular place. So they are in Paphos, and they've come. They've come up against a magician, a false prophet, and he's also from the tribe of Judah. So guys, listen. That's he, it's very interesting. And not only was he a false prophet and a magician, but he was he was hanging out with the proconsul, and the proconsul is actually one with great, great authority. Generally, he was a governor. He was in a Roman province. And so it's generally called a governor. He, I mean, a man of great authority. And this is the man who has called for Shaul and Barnabas to come see him. He's seeking the mm -hmm. truth. But who has he surrounded himself by? <laughs> a magician, a false prophet. Okay, so I wanted you to understand who these people are. Who, who are the players in this story? But Alumus, the magician, for so his name is translated, withstood them, seeking to turn the proconsul away from the belief. And guys, that everybody's still doing that today, okay? It doesn't matter if they're a magician or not. There is deceit everywhere. And how many times do you hear people say, oh, you don't have to follow the, the, those commandments? They've been done away with, right? Mm -hmm. It's the same thing. Okay, but in this period of time, this man was either of the practicing either Kabbalah or Zohar. If he was uh, from the tribe of Judah and was also practicing magic, magic was very much taboo. Look at uh, 2 Corinthians 11 through 13. 2 Corinthians 11, 13 through 15, excuse me. Valerie, would you read for us? Okay, love. What? what? 13 through 15. Okay. For such are false emissaries, deceptive workers, masquerading as emissaries of Messiah. And no wonder, for Satan himself masquerades as a messenger of light. It is not surprising then if his servants also masquerade as servants of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Go ahead and read 16. Again, I say, let no one think me to be a fool. And if otherwise, at least receive me as a fool for me to also boast a little. Okay, so did you hear what they're talking about right there on, on a magician? Mm -hmm. What does your say, Dennis? So guys, listen, we, we are 11, studying from 11, 13, no, 11, 13. 11, 13 through 14. Yeah. So we're studying from the Scriptures Bible. We're also studying from the Complete Jewish Bible. We're also studying from the Aramaic Bible and from the Sefer. So we have all of these out. So at some point, if we find anything different, I want my, my guys that have these Bibles to speak up, okay? But did you hear what he said? For such are false emissaries. So they're sending out the true emissaries, Shaul and Barnabas. But such are the false em emissaries. And what are they doing? Deceptive workers masquerading as emissaries of Messiah. And that's what this magician was doing, right? Mm -hmm. He was he was pretending to be one of the Yahudim, the tribe of Judah's uh, emissaries. I lost my place in, in uh, uh, to to dress to up or, or to imitate to put on false face. yeah put on a false face. That's a very good description right there. Pretend to be. Pretend to be. Yeah. And, and what does it say about Satan? And no wonder. No wonder they do that because Satan himself masquerades as a messenger of light. And guys, how many times in, in the book, the first book, first and second book of Adam and Eve, and I, guys, I'm sorry, I know this is backwards, but uh, if you want to read it, you can see it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, how, many, how many times did we read in there that Hasatan appeared as a messenger of Yahweh? 
How many times did we see that? Mm. So not only him, but his his messengers, all of the how many how many angels fell with him? Two, a, a third. third. Thirty three point three 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 three. It's the number, right? That's a lot of them. That's a lot of them. Okay. It's not surprising then if his servants also masquerade as servants of righteousness, whose end shall be according to what? Their righteousness or their works. It's according to their works. So these magicians, what what is their end going to be? It's going to be according to their works. How many mm -hmm. people have they deceived? All of them. All of them. You're right, Robert. So listen, if you're out there teaching... I'm just here to tell you, it is so important. You better be studying scripture enough that you're teaching truth. Because every Amen. one of us, every one of us will be liable. Me, I go through and through and through. And do I get it right all the time? No, I don't. I try. I try. But but there there is a lot of scripture to study. And that's why it takes all of us here. Mm -hmm. As a team, and that's why I, I hold myself accountable to each and every one of y'all. We each I'm, should do that. We should all be accountable to each other, which makes us a family. Mm -hmm. But but listen, guys, we're accountable for what we teach. So according to our works, we're going to be judged. So I want you to see exactly what this magician is up to. And then Shaul... <clears throat> Oh, and so he's he's trying to convince the con, con, the consulate, or the council, the proconsul, that he doesn't need to listen to these guys that he sent for because he didn't want what. He didn't want to turn him away from the. He wanted to turn him away from the belief of the way, right? Mm -hmm. Can okay. I ask a question: How many were in the council? I mean, I know that's not. Is it, well, a is, pro it, is it like the governors or the what? I mean, how does that? He's a proconsul, so he's literally the top guy in that Roman province. I don't know how many pro province. Okay. Yeah, so I don't know how many proconsuls there were. Mm -hmm. I, that would be a good thing to look up. I mean, I like to see all the history behind but it's all a this. Province. Yes, yeah. so he would he would be like the governor of the province, the, right. kind of like the head. Well, he was using the name Yeshua, too. He sure was. Right out there. I'm glad you caught that. Mm -hmm. I noticed that, and I was like, man, he's even Bar, oh. Bar, Yar, Yah, Yah, Yahushua. Mm -hmm. Okay, then Shaul, who is also Paul, filled with the set-apart spirit, looked intently at him. So he's just gazing at this man. And he said, you ready for what he said? <laughs> oh, son of the devil. Filled with all deceit and all recklessness, you enemy of all righteousness, shall you not cease perverting the straight ways of Yahweh? <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. So he is not being, he's not very uh, favorable towards this man, is he? No. You know, that was pretty important because um, Charles had been on the other side of the fence. And yes. here he is making this bold statement. <laughs> that, yes. that really said a lot in the synagogue. And so, guys, when Shaul was on the other side of the fence, mm -hmm. he was actually on the right side of the fence. Air, he was erring on the right side of the fence, but with so many laws packed onto it mm -hmm. that none of us could get to. We, we couldn't have gotten into the kingdom trying to follow the set of rules that he, he was following. They were very strict. <coughs> Not have I coughed in a week, and here I am. <laughs> and now, <clears throat> see the hand of Yahweh is upon you, and you shall be blind and not seeing the sun, the sun for a time. And instantly a dark mist fell on him, and he went about seeking someone to lead him by the hand. <laughs> Who does this remind you of? Shaul. Shaul. What <laughs> happened on the road to Damascus? He was blinded. Yeah. Did anybody have a, a Kleenex? It's not That's clean. not been used? <laughs> That's not quite used. <laughs> so, guys, this was exactly mm -hmm. what happened to Shaul. Thank you, Bonnie. Um, exactly what happened to him. <clears throat> and he was led about by, by the hand, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. How crazy mm -hmm. is that? And having seen what took place, the proconsul believed and being astonished at the teaching of the master. So, listen, does it take a miracle like that to make us believe? It shouldn't. Mm -hmm. But the proconsul was so wrapped up into that, what that magician was doing, he had to have a sign. Yes, sir. What? <laughs> I, 
Scratching his yeah, ear. Yeah, don't scratch your ear like that. It You'll looks like you're, you're like, hey, I got, it. I got an idea here. <laughs> Listen to this. So, guys, in, in all of these instances, what we're seeing here, first of all, <clears throat> as they were doing service to the master and fasted, we have got to get into mm -hmm. more fasting. I know we fast. How many times a year are we fasting right now? Valerie <coughs> fasts more than, than any of us. But one day a year on what? Yom Kippurim. Mm -hmm. That's the complete only fast. That's the only day that we do a complete fast. I fasted maybe two weeks ago. <clears throat> Guys, listen. Yah will open up so many things to you when you honor him with a fast. He really will. He will show you some things that you need to hear. Show you some things you need to see in here. Hmm. How's that? Make Sometimes sense? things you don't want to hear. <coughs> Most often it is yes. things that you don't want to hear. But we need to listen to him. That's right. And having seen, we are in Acts 13, uh, verse 12. And having seen what took place, the proconsul believed, being astonished at the teaching of the master. Hmm. And you when speaking of the proconsul there, is it speaking of Paul or Paul and Bornaba or Bor? The proconsul no, was the governor of that Roman pro province where they and were. His group. <clears throat> they, Paul, Shaul and Barnaba were emissaries. But guys, I want to read to you right now from the book of Adam and Eve, from the first book in chapter 27. <clears throat> I want to read to you the description of who Hasatan is. When Hasatan, the hater of all good, <laughs> yeah, I've got people in here doing what I've asked them to do. So when we hear the name Hasatan, the hater of all good, Boo. They've been taught to say boo. Thank you. And only two, two passed that test. Only two passed, but the second time around, three. That's better. <laughs> so, guys, that is how he's referred to in the first book of Adam and Eve. And I just find it, it's, it's sad because that's exactly what he hates. Listen, the seed of Satan is going to be, what, what did y'all, what was the curse on, on Hasatan? Seed. Her seed mm -hmm. will crush the head of your seed. Mm. So if you know that that this man's seed or this woman's seed is going to crush your seed and your head, what are you going to do? <clears throat> Get him. You're going to do everything you can to destroy her seed. Okay? And that's exactly mm -hmm. what Hasatan is doing. He's been doing it from, from, from the beginning of time, and he said he will not stop until the end of the age. And it's coming quickly, mm -hmm. guys. Do, do we know the date and the time? No, we don't. We know the season because we're not fo those foolish virgins. We do know the season mm -hmm. that he will come. But we don't know the date or the year or the time of the day. So we need to be prepared at all times. <clears throat> and we're in 1313. Uh, 13. And having put out from, from Pathos, Shaul and those with him came to purge in Pamphylia, and Yochanan, having, having left them, returned to Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. And I want you to remember this, because this is actually John Mark, okay? That's right. So this is, this is we're going to see in a little bit when, here, you want this? Where um, Shaul has a problem with John Mark, and it's because he left them here, okay? He just went off and left them. <clears throat> and, and who was John Mark? He was kin to Barnabas. He was his cousin. So this is why he was with them. He was born of his cousin, and he leaves them right here. And um, and he returned to Jerusalem. We are never given the reason why he did this, so we don't know. <clears throat> but he could have had a good one. We don't know, right? Mm -hmm. But Shaul was not very forgiving in that. But passing through from Purge, they came to Antioch in Pisidia and went into the congregation on the Sabbath day and sat down. Ooh. They're still studying on the Sabbath. Listen, guys, when, when Shaul finally went into the mission field, <coughs> it was about 14 years from the, the time of his Damascus experience to this period. So it's about 14 years. 14 years later, what's going on? Ooh, worshiping on the they're still worshiping on Shabbat. Okay? And I want to show you that. Uh, go to Galatians 1, 14. Because you know what we try to do in here is mm -hmm. we try to back, back everything we say with Scripture so that... Galatians 1. Galatians 1. 
Is someone there? One what? <laughs> it's one fourteen through nineteen. Bethany, are you there? Mm -hmm. Would you read, please? And I'm going to turn this around, hopefully. Upside down or crooked. Okay. And I progressed in Yehudazium <coughs> beyond many of my age in my race, being more exceedingly ardent for the traditions of my fathers. But when it pleased Elohim, who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his favor, to reveal his son in me, that I might bring him the good news to the nations. I did not immediately consult with flesh and blood, neither did I go up to Jerusalem to those who are, were emissaries before me, but I went to Arabia and returned again to Dam Damascus. 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 <laughs> Is that it? D does it? No, because so you, you need to keep going. 19? <clears throat> yes. Then after three years, I went up to Jerusalem to learn from Kepha and remained with him for 15 days. And I saw no other of the emissaries except Jacob, the brother of the master. So the, the time he spent in Arabia was about 11 years, and the time he spent with Kepha was about three. Hmm. <clears throat> so the total time before he actually, you know, he's preaching this whole time, okay? He mm -hmm. hasn't stopped. Hi. He hasn't stopped, stopped preaching. He is preaching. But before he went into the mission field and the, the mm -hmm. works that we're going to read about right here, <clears throat> it was about 14 years. Uh-uh. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah. Oh, no. Okay, whoa. <laughs> Sounds like we're mixing They're, they're giving me drugs for my <laughs> cold. and Y'all may see me run out of here like flaming red hair because it may set me on fire. <laughs> It's oil. No, that's okay. okay. It'll be fine. What do you think it's going to be, tough? Here we go. Bottoms up. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, baby. <clears throat> okay. She's awake now. <laughs> okay. So, I want you to see that. that it's, been, it's been a while, and they are still observing Sabbath. Okay, 15. And after the reading of the Torah and the prophets, the rulers of the congregation sent to them, saying, Men, brothers, if you have any word of encouragement for the people, speak. <clears throat> so the, the leaders of this congregation have actually come to him and said, Hey, we know you're emissaries. We know you came from Jerusalem. If you have any encouraging words, we want you to talk to the people. So they've invited them mm -hmm. to speak. And Shaul, standing up and motioning with his hand, said, Men, Israelis, and those fearing Elohim, listen. The Elohim of this people, Israel, did choose our fathers and exalted the people in their sojourning in the land of Mitzrayim, and with a high arm he brought them out of it. Now for a time of about 40 years he sustained them in the wilderness, and having destroyed seven nations in the land of Canaan, he gave their land to them as an inheritance. And after that he gave judges for about 450 years until Shemuel or Samuel the prophet. <clears throat> But then they asked for a sovereign, and Elohim gave them Shaul, or Saul, the son of Kish, a man of the tribe of Benjamin, for forty years. And having removed him, he raised up for them David, a sovereign, to whom also he gave witness and said, I have found David, the son of Yeshai, a man after my own heart, who shall do all of my desires. Wow. You know what, guys? <clears throat> I don't have any notes on this, but listen. If you want to do all of Yah's desires, do his commandments. Honor Shabbat. Honor him above everything else. Honor your father and your mother. Okay? Mm -hmm. I mean, these are important. I think the majority of us, we don't steal. We don't kill. We don't lie. And, and the line that they speak of here is a malicious gossip lie to completely destroy someone's reputation or get them in trouble. Um, but we, for the most part, we don't do that. We probably do covet. We covet. I'm sure mm -hmm. we covet. So, guys, if you want to be a man after Yah's own heart, we need to be honoring his, his requ requirements for us to be his children. <clears throat> and we're in 23. And from this one seed, according to the promise, Elohim raised up for Yisrael a Savior, Yeshua. So, Yah was thought so much of King David that from his seed, he brought who? 
Yeshua. Yeshua, our Savior and our Messiah, who without him, would we have salvation at all? No, because his very name means what? Salvation. 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 Yes, go ahead. The right arm of yeah. salvation. Well, I was going to say right, righteousness. Righteousness. It, it means Yah's right arm of salvation. That's how beautiful it is. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> After Yochanan had first proclaimed the immersion of repentance to all the people of Israel before his coming, and as Yochanan was completing his mission, he said, Who do you suppose I am? I'm not he, but see, there comes one after me, the sandals of whose feet I am not worthy to lose. (laughs) Men, brothers, sons of the race of Abraham, and those among you fearing Elohim, to you the word of this deliverance has been sent. For those dwelling in Jerusalem and their rulers, because they did not know him, nor even the voices of the prophets, which are read every Sabbath, have filled them in having judged him. <clears throat> Guys, listen. <coughs> Where's Yeshua mentioned? Where's he first mentioned? In the, in the very okay. first mm-hmm. verse. Well, yes. In the beginning, he was. That's what John tells us. In the beginning was Yah. In the very beginning, the nail-scarred hand itself is in the very beginning of the the word in the Hebrew language. And that's why we can't throw Hebrew out, guys. I would love for for this whole group at some point to be able to go through Scripture and read the the Hebrew uh, scrolls. Wouldn't that be awesome? Yeah. Wouldn't that be a miracle? A miracle. <laughs> That's more of a like it. For me, it would be like a real it miracle. It would be a wonder. Yeah. <laughs> so listen, <laughs> it would be a wonder. That would be wondering what we're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> so listen, all of these men lived in uh, Jerusalem. They heard <coughs> the prophets read every single Shabbat, yet they killed the one the prophets spoke of. Mm-hmm. Oi. And having found not one cause for the death, they asked Pilate that he should be put to death. <clears throat> and when they had accomplished all that was written concerning him, taking him down from the timber, they laid him in a tomb. But Elohim raised him from the dead, and he was seen for many days by those who camp with, uh, camp came up with him from Galil to Jerusalem, who are his witnesses to this people. We bring you the good news. The promise made to the fathers that Elohim has filled this for us, their children, having raised up Yeshua, as it has also been written in the second Tehillah, you are my son today, I have brought you forth, and that he raised him out of the dead, no more to return to corruption, he has said thus, I shall give you the trustworthy kindness of David. For this reason, he also says in another Tehillah, that you shall not give your kind one to see corruption. And did Yeshua see corruption? No. Did his body see corruption? No. Did everyone else's? Yes. Mm -hmm. All the prophets died. Their bodies were withered and and probably eaten by worms, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, that sounds kind of gross, but that's probably what happened. But his did not. But he whom Elohim raised up saw no corruption, and that was Yeshua. Let, there, let it therefore be known to you, brothers, that through this one forgiveness of sins is proclaimed to you. Guys, and again, well, let me finish that one. Let me, let me start again, 38. Let it therefore be known to you, brothers, that through this one forgiveness of sins is proclaimed to you. And by him, everyone who believes is declared right from all sins from which you were not able to be declared right by the Torah of Moshe. Okay, listen. <clears throat> what sins are there, according to the Torah of Moshe, that there is no sacrifice for? Rebellion. Rebellion. Blasphemy. Blasphemy. Blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. There is no forgiveness. In fact, there's no, there's there no forgiveness. It's actually intentional sin. Yes. Listen, what's, what's worse, the worst kind of blasphemy there could be but to deny, deny him? Mm-hmm. Listen, I mean, uh, true. <laughs> Bonnie's clearing the way. <laughs> He's coming. <laughs> but but listen, guys, without my, without Yeshua, we could have no forgiveness for the, the sins uh-huh. of rebellion. The Torah the couldn't of, do it. No, the Torah <laughs> can't do it. Once we've intentionally sinned 
against the Torah, there's no sacrifice to be made. And, and it's very specific in Leviticus. Yes, sir. Let me read 39 out of the Aramaic. Yes, Ma'am. please. And from all that which you were not able to be made righteous by the Torah of Moshe, by this man, Yeshua, speaking of, everyone who believes is justified. There you go. Everyone who believes. Okay. I mean, I, I kind of like that word because, oh, if we believe, we become righteous. Well, actually, if you do believe, All right. you do become righteous because you're following him in that walk. You're following Torah, and, and that's keeping the commands. That's that, what righteousness that is, is for beautiful. us. That is beautiful. It says justified here. So mm-hmm. uh, You're found right. Right rule. Mm-hmm. Right rule. That's it. Just, just Read it one more time. And from all that which you were not able to be made righteous by the Torah of Moshe, by this man, everyone who believes is justified by Yeshua. Okay, in, in, in Hebrews, what does it say? By belief, Abraham offered up his son. Mm-hmm. By belief, Noah did what? He built an ark. By belief, listen guys, belief is an action word. If you believe, you're going to do, right? So if you if you believe you're gonna do exactly what he tells you, but without you can you can believe and you can do every single one of the commandments, which is impossible. We can't we can't do it, guys. We're human and we're gonna err, aren't we? We're gonna open our big mouths and things from the heart are just gonna spill out. It's Jealousy, anger, and rage. Everyone and who believes he, is justified. <laughs> you have to do something to be justified yes. by it. I mean it's. That word believe. Yep. That that is beautiful. I love the Aramaic. Love mm-hmm. the Aramaic. Okay, let's go forward. And thank you. Uh, this is what I love about having all these these other very reliable Bibles in here Helps. is that we can use all these scriptures to get to the full meaning. And the Aramaic really does. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> We're in verse forty of Acts thirteen. Miss Misty, do you have a, a short person with you today? I am a short person. You, <laughs> I just had to lower the seat. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's a man. Okay. Mom. I was like, you even made the short person noise when you came through the door. And I was like, <laughs> okay, so we have our Giovanni here. We're excited. Yeah. Okay, we're in verse 40 of Acts 13, Misty, for, and you have, so you haven't mismatched. What then? That what that what, excuse me, watch then that what was said in the prophets does not come upon you. See you despisers, marvel and perish, for I work a work in your days, a work which you would in no way believe if someone were to declare it to you. Habakkuk one five. Let's let's go there. <clears throat> Back. Did you find it? Six twenty-seven is the habit. It's tucked by It's six twenty-five. Psalm six twenty-five. What um? Yeah. What uh? Chapter. Oh. You no, wrote. That's not six twenty-five. Why did it tell me six twenty-five? It's one verse five. <coughs> 627. Chapter 1, yeah. 627. Okay, I'm just all around it. Page 627. Yeah. So is everybody there? Okay, whistle when you are. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, you can't whistle? (laughs) That's my whistle. Okay. Bethany. One what? You're going to read one and actually read four through seven okay therefore the torah ceases and right ruling never goes forth for the wrong Mm -hmm. him is in the righteous so that the right rulings comes out twisted okay let's let's talk about that real quick the torah see therefore the torah ceases and right ruling never goes forth for the wrong him in the righteous so that the right ruling comes out what twisted 
It doesn't yes. even come out the way it's supposed to come out. So guys, listen. Did we even know that we were supposed to be following right rulings? I didn't. I grew up in church. I didn't know there was anything I had to follow except love Yahweh with all my heart, mind, and soul and love my neighbor as myself. That seems easy enough mm -hmm. as long as you're just looking at the neighbor next door. <laughs> but if you're looking at the neighbor on the street, it's, it makes it more difficult, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. So look at this. The right rulings come out twisted. What do we see today? What right rulings come out twisted, right? This is perverted. Oh, perverted. Mm -hmm. That's even a better. Mm -hmm. What's your say? Not He's not talking. Okay, go ahead, Bethany. The bread hot is shy. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> go ahead, Bethany. <laughs> Smarty. <laughs> Look among among the nations and see and be amazed. Be amazed. For a work is being wrought in your days which you would not believe if it were told. Mm. See, I am raising up the casting a bitter and hasty nation who is going through the bread of the earth to possess dwelling places that are not theirs. They are frightening and fearsome. Their right ruling and their ex exaltation proceed from themselves. So I want you to see everything that he's talking about there, about what you're not going to believe. <coughs> what you're not going to believe is everything that's going to be done, right? <clears throat> Okay, we're in verse 42. We're making progress. Mm -hmm. I think we'll get through 16. <laughs> and when the Yahudim went out of the congregation, the nations begged to have these words spoken to them the next Shabbat. So they're asking for him to come back. The Yahudim being who? The tribe of Judah, right? Mm -hmm. The Jews. And when the meeting of the congregation had broken up, many of the Yahudim and of the worshiping converts followed Shaul and Barnaba, who, speaking to them, were urging them to continue in the favor of Elohim. And on the next Shabbat, almost all of the city came together to hear the word of Elohim. But, but, don't you love the buts? Mm -hmm. But when the Yahudim saw the crowds, they were filled with jealousy. And contradicting and speaking evil, they opposed what Shaul was saying. So this is the Jews. Guys, I want you to look at something. Because <clears throat> everything that Yah, our Father, ordained has been done throughout the, the Word, right? Nothing was by accident. Look at Romans 11. And we're going to read 11, I think it's just through 12. And are you ready? Okay, I say then, have they, and this is talking about the Jews, the tribe of Judah, have they stumbled that they shall fall? Let it not be. But by their fall, deliverance has come to the nations. And the nations means what? Gentiles. The Gentiles. The Gentiles. The people who are not under the covenant. So deliverance has come to the people who are not covenanted to provoke the tribe of Judah to jealousy. So guys, listen, everything that Yah allows to happen, and it was already happening here with Shaul, they were blinded, and suddenly they saw all the nations, all the people of the nations coming into their synagogue, and they're like, hey, this is our place. What are they doing in here? Coming in here for the salvation. Mm -hmm. Guys, we should be overjoyed. We should be celebrating that everybody's coming in and everybody's wanting to learn the truth and the fullness of the word, but not them. And it was because of y'all, okay? He separated out, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so re I'm going to read that one more time. But when the Yahudim saw the crowds, they were filled with mm -hmm. jealousy. Where does jealousy come from? It comes from the heart, and Hasatan is the root of it. Mm -hmm. It is. And, and, you know, sometimes we can't even control it. There, there's so much jealousy and rage. We just can't even control it. And contradicting and speaking evil, they opposed what Shaul was saying. But speaking boldly, Shaul and Barnabas said, it was necessary that the word of Elohim should be spoken to you first. So they spoke it to who first? The Yahudim, the, the tribe of Judah. But since you thrust it away, they cast it aside and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting light, 
See, we turn to the nations. So they're going to the nations now, to the uncovenanted ones, which is more than likely the house of what? Israel, the southern house, the house, the, excuse me. Northern. Thank you. You're what a look, daggers. <laughs> I was like, what I do? <laughs> is it my cinnamon breath no. that's getting you over there? <laughs> okay, so it's the northern tribe, the house of Israel that went north and then was scattered everywhere. Mm -hmm. And guys, that happened before Yeshua walked. So they were already scattered. So now they're going to the house of Israel to, to remind them of what they've forgotten. Who are they? Okay. For so the master has commanded us. I have set you to be a light to the nations. I'm in uh, Acts 13, verse 47. <laughs> All right. Live streamers, get with us. For so the master has commanded us, I have set you to be the light to the nations that you should be for deliverance to the ends of the earth. Listen to that. Isn't that beautiful? Mm. So, Shaul and everyone speaking truth, listen, you're to be a light to who? Those who are not covenanted. Mm -hmm. Those who aren't under the covenant. Guys, listen, everything you do, everything you do, especially you guys who are wearing your zit seats. And we have one wearing a seat. Uh, there's a really interesting word that's oh. different. Okay. In in here. Uh, he just got all excited. And, 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 and I turn, did. Let me turn uh, around. Forty-seven. Uh, what is saying here? Uh, I have sent you to be a light to the nations, that you should be for deliverance to the ends of the earth. Okay, never mind. Uh, <laughs> it, it was to the limits of the earth. I'm missing it. Oh. Uh, I, 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 was, I was reading while you was reading, and I thought you said to the end of the earth, and I thought, well, that could mean like the end of. Mm -hmm. And it is. <laughs> to the but very the end limit would of mean this. to go out everywhere, the whole, the limits mm -hmm. of it. Yes. Anyway, I, I did get excited for a minute. He was so excited, <laughs> and then it just kind of went fizzled. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> okay, guys, I want us to look at the fullness of this verse in Isaiah 49 6. <coughs> Because this whole verse is not actually represented there. I'm going to start actually in the end of five. I'm going to start in five. And now said Yahweh, who formed me from the womb to be his servant, to bring Yaakov, or, or Jacob, back to him, which is who? Who is Yaakov? It's the house of Israel. It is the house of Israel. It's also the house of, of Judah. So it's both mm -hmm. houses. Though Israel is not gathered to him, yet I am esteemed in the eyes of Yahweh, and my Elohim has been my strength. And he says, Shall it be a small matter for you to be my servant, to raise up the tribes of Yaakov, and to bring back the preserved ones of Israel? And I shall give you as a lot to the nations to be my deliverance to the ends of the world. And again, the nations are the Goyim. And it's the Nazarene that are the, the lights, right? Yeah, I mean, we're, we're all connected to the, the branch, uh, to Yeshua, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, ma'am. That's what this one says. It says, instead of, it says, I have set before you a light of the other nations that you should be for Yeshua unto the ends of the earth. Ooh, that you should be for Yeshua until the ends of the earth. And that's Old Testament. That was Isaiah 49, right? Six? This one's in Acts. Acts. Oh, you're in Acts. Okay. That verse that we just read in 47, Acts 47. Okay, is it the same in Isaiah? In, in the Sefer? It says reference to Isaiah 49. Yeah, okay, so I bet it, it was using the name Yeshua, salvation, even in Isaiah, guys. Yeshua was first. Which verse was that? Uh, it's Isaiah 49 6. Oh, 49 6. Uh huh. What did you no, say? No. Oh, I thought you said Acts. She, well, this is an Acts, but it's referencing, it's referencing to, oh, Isaiah. Nice. Yeah. It's in a sefer. <clears throat> sefer, whatever. Okay, and when the nations heard this, they were glad and they praised the word of Yahweh as many had, as had been appointed to everlasting life believed. And if they believed, what did they do? They, they do. They did what Ruth did. What did they do? Come on. They became 
they, Israel. Oh. Mm-hmm. That's it. They became covenanted. And they began following his commandments, walking his walk, and doing everything that he told them to do. She said, your God will be my God. Your, your God Elohim will be my Elohim. Say it louder, Valerie. She said, your Elohim will be my Elohim. Your people are my people. Mm-hmm. Your God is my God. Mm-hmm. Where you go, I go. And only death shall part me from right. you. Mm-hmm. And who was Ruth? She was a Moabite. She was a she was lineage a descendant. of Yeshua. Ruth was. A, she Ruth. sure was. Uh-huh. Yes, yeah, she was. She was also uh, a descendant of Lot. Mm-hmm. Because she was a Moabite. Moabite. So right. as a Moabite, she couldn't even be allowed into the congregation no. down to the 10th generation. And she wasn't mm-hmm. of that 10th generation. So by law, she couldn't even go into the congregation. But listen, when she chose, when she chose to be like Ruth, and that's what we do. That's exactly what we're reading. Exactly. Is, is that when she chose to be Israel, when she said to, to Na- Naomi, mm-hmm. when she said to Naomi, your people are my people, your God is, is my God. Where you go, I go. She chose to be who? Israel. Israel. And she turned she her back no on the Moabites. No longer Moabites. No more one of the Moabites. No under that Moabite curse. She was grafted in. She was grafted in. And that was beautiful. Mm-hmm. Into so the common out. wealth yes. of Israel. So Thank you. I like that. That's what the Brit Holly Shaw says we grafted into. That's right. That's right. That's right. I like it. What'd you say? Oh, I was just saying that she broke that generational curse. Of her children. She sure did. Mm-hmm. And she guys, did. listen, wow, that's important. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter. Thank you. It doesn't matter what you were born. It mm-hmm. matters what you choose to be. Right. Every single one of you can change the next life of your children and your grandchildren. It's your choice. Mm-hmm. It's your choice. Choose life. Choose Yeshua. Okay? Right. Okay. <clears throat> And the word of Yahweh was being spread throughout the entire country. And you know what? On that last verse, I really wanted to read Galatians 3.28, but I missed it. But I want to read it anyway. Is that okay? Yep. No. Yeah. <laughs> we'll accept it this time. Galatians 3.28. Y'all are a tough crowd, I'm telling you. Y'all are tough. Stubborn. Okay, in uh, 28, this is what Shaul says. He said, there is not... Yehudi, there's not Judah, nor Greek, there is not slave or free, there is not male or female, for you are all one in Yeshua. So this is kind of regarding the caste system, isn't it? If you are of Messiah, then you are the seed of Abraham and heirs to the promise. Yay, the promise, right? We're going to be brought back home. Mm -hmm. So, So listen, guys. You don't have to stay where you are. You can you can be if you're Greek, you don't have to stay Greek. You can be Israel. We want to be Israel, don't we? Mm. We want to be those covenanted ones. Okay. Sorry, I kind of got off track there. And the word of Yahweh was being spread throughout the entire country, but the Yahudim started up the worshiping and noble women and the the chief men of the city and raised up persecution against Shaul and Barnaba and threw them out of their borders. Because they were what? That J word. Jealous. They were jealous. Everybody was feeling like chattering teeth here. Well, it was bringing stuff against what they, and it would interfere with their positions. That's right. That's exactly right. And shaking off the dust, I like this, mm-hmm. shaking off the dust from their feet against them, they came to Iconium. So listen, who, who else shook the dust off their feet? The apostles. Uh-huh. When, when Yeshua sent them out to the cities, he said, if they will not receive you there, shake yeah. even the dust mm-hmm. off your feet and leave. Don't Get waste out your, of there. Don't waste your time. Don't waste your time. <laughs> don't let their dirt cling to you, yeah. right? Mm. And the taught ones were filled with joy in the set-apart spirit. Listen, they just got tossed out of a, of a province, and they're, <laughs> listen, they're singing and they're praising. They're filled with the set apart spirit. Guys, we should be that way all, always. They did not get offended. <laughs> they didn't, listen, they didn't get offended. It's so easy for us to yes. be offended well, I mean, by anything. We can, we, 
I mean, you look at me wrong and I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm really offended. You really hurt my feelings. Yeah. I need a, what is it called? A, what, the clown that came to with a man to be fired. What is it called? A, what are they called? The little pets? Oh man, I'm showing my age because I don't know all this newfangled stuff. Yeah. I'm going to give you one. <laughs> no. <laughs> a, a comfort clown came to a man to to see his boss because he thought he was getting fired. Oh. Well, he took one with him for a comfort clown. Yes, yeah. a comfort clown. It was a real man sitting really? there making, I mean, the making animal balloons. He was so noisy they had to say, shh, clown, you have to be... Listen, guys, we get so offended that we have to bring comfort animals. I mean, they, they're bringing pigs on planes now. I, I have to have as my support. emotional support animal. So it's a verse that says, Great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. There you go. Mm. And guys, listen, yeah, love that is word, beautiful. Though. Yeah. Well, he is a word. It, his law is a word. Um, guys, was Yeshua ever offended? Mm-mm. Mm -mm. As he hung on the cross, was he offended? What did he say? Forgive them. Hmm. Forgive them, for they know not what they, they do. Stephanos, Stephan, he also did the same thing. Mm -hmm. As he laid bleeding, as they were stoning him, he said, forgive them, Father. They don't know what they're doing. Okay. They don't know what they're doing. We do so many things because we don't know what we're doing, and we're so offended. Could you imagine what it would feel like to be... <laughs> Unoffendable. No, I would well, love to. And we should all strive. I would to love to get there. Unoffendable. But it's a hard place to be, guys. Yeah. It's a hard place to get to. But one day, Emotions. if we keep walking the walk, we're going to be to the place where we are not as offended as we used to be. Right, Gareth? Well, you become more like Yeshua. That's you, it. As you feed him into you, then you're to supposed to imitate him. Other things too much. <laughs> we think too. Listen, guys, we think too much of ourselves. Yeah, yeah I was just gonna say it's 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 about self centeredness. Yeah. Yes. If you love your brother as yourself, well, the first thing that you're thinking about is yourself when you're offended. Yeah. So how is this making me feel? Is this, yes. Why would they do that to me? Of me, you know. <clears throat> me, me, if me. You can step out of yourself mm -hmm. into the other person's. Yeah. Perspective, choose maybe their point of view. And, and, and a lot of times people aren't doing things um, to us as much as they're doing it for themselves. Yes. And if, yes. You can, if you could separate in that moment, realize, I don't like this, you know, this person. We determine whether or not it affects us. So, I mean, we might not like what they're doing. It might be affecting us. But if we can look outside of ourselves and realize, I don't know what all this person is going through. <laughs> That's it. But they are obviously making, you know, those decisions or mm -hmm. actions probably because they're being self-centered too for themselves. Well, they could be fearful. To do with us usually. Yes. And when we can do that, we separate our emotion from yes. the situation. And kind of just step back and see it for what it is. Sometimes it's not our. My sister likes to say that's not my. Um, that's not my meal, or that's not my plate to eat, or something like that. And I like that. Kind of your, your deal. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Going on, yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, and you know that's mm -hmm. true. When we can separate ourselves from it and not let it affect us, and look look at it from the outside, and know that there's a great big, there's a way bigger picture than what we're actually looking at. Guys, things, the things that offend us become very, very small. Very small. We, when we look at what our Savior did on the cross, the things that we let offend us, they're so little. We, we want to, you know, point fingers at others uh, when, when we're affected. But mm -hmm. what, what that is really revealing is that we have a problem also. And it, most it's of a us tool, do. It's a trial. <laughs> it is. It, uh, it's another it's test. It's one of those tests. Yes, it is. And we don't realize that, but... When we let somebody affect our emotions, it's showing us that we have a problem. They That's may it. not. I mean, we have a problem. We have a problem. And I like the way Misty said, it is our choice. To, we get to choose. Is it going to affect me or am I just going to, you know, let it roll off? 
And guys, listen, we've got to learn to just step and back and let it go. doesn't mean that you're ignoring it. No. Or the, the aspect of you of it that you think is not right or incorrect. It's separating your emotion and yourself. You're not from, feeding into from it. From a situation at the moment because sometimes those things fall into place on their own. And other yes. times um, maybe we're just able to approach it in a better way by coming, mm -hmm. to, coming to it later. You know what I mean? The stuff you put in my cup is eating through my cup. <laughs> you know what? It, being offended leads to it. It, it leads to. <laughs> it will do that. I forgot to do. It leads to unforgiveness. Try to poison you. On guard. No, but <laughs> y'all watching that. a public yeah, poisoning. Yeah. You're not coughing. It leads to unforgiveness. Uh huh. Being offended Where's leads to. Uh -huh. Would you? Yeah. Do you want this water in it? Yes, please. You're so sweet. Would you like Thank somebody you. else to get it for you? Yeah, I don't want anybody to drop in my water anymore. <laughs> the day that we become unoffendable will be, we'll be wonderful. But <laughs> if we weren't offendable, we would not be sitting here today. We would not have the freedom that we have to sit here in this church. But it gives it, us the opportunity to continue to grow. That that right. and that's the point. All is that of those right. things that come up wars gives us a chance to take off yes. at those things we need to work on. But as we become unoffendable, and that's what we're supposed yeah. to do, Gary, is we're supposed to be changing into who Yeshua is. As we look in the mirror, one day we should see him looking back at us. We should resemble him. And as we become more like him, we won't be offendable. Guess what? Then you will be going out and teaching other people. That's what we're supposed to be doing. Yeah. Everyone's called to be a minister. Yes, Robert. You know, that's, <clears throat> when you're, and she's, she's right about that, when you're, the fat, and, it, and this part is very, very important. When you're out on the road and, and you've been 20, 30 days, no, and no food, very little water, and you have, I mean, everything you have is to give, you can see the whole playing field. You can step back, they can throw rocks and hit you in the head, it doesn't bother you. When you step back mm -hmm. of the world and, 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 and to the eating and the food and the fasting, you know, they they wouldn't express that so much. It takes it, it takes. Uh, Thank you, sweetie. Some people, you know, the the one day that you fast, uh, they're going crazy because all of the habits to be picked up and so forth. But it takes a good. Uh, it's like a job. It takes two weeks to be acclimated to it. It takes about a week or two, and you think about nothing else. I mean, and you you help everybody. Everything rolls off your back, and everything comes at you, and the evil comes at you twice or ten times as much. Mm -hmm. But uh, the fasting and, and the nutrition part is of the utmost importance. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's, it's very true. We all need to be fasting. We need to be practicing fasting. In fact, we should, we'll, we'll talk about that today after we, we get through and get off live stream. Okay? Sound good? Mm -hmm. why, is, why is everybody looking at me like I'm a stranger? No, I'm kidding. Okay. You We're in 14. Huh? Okay, no. No. <laughs> okay. We are in chapter 14, and thank you for everybody's comments. Chapter 14, verse 1, and there he is, Speedy Gonzalez, Giovanni. And it came to be in Iconium that they went together into the congregation of the Yahudim and spoke in such a way that, the, that a great number of both Yahudim and Greeks believed. But the Yahudim would not obey, who would not obey, start up the nations and evilly influenced their beings against the brothers. Shame on them, right? It says poisoned their minds. It poisoned Ill their minds, them. evilly influenced them. Ill treat them. Ill treated mm -hmm. them. Guys, listen. Mm. I'm not gonna go there. Okay, three. Verse three of chapter 14. So they remained a long time, speaking boldly in the master who was bearing witness to the word of his favor, giving signs and wonders to be done by their hands. And the crowd of the city was divided, and some sided with the Yahudim and some with the emissaries. But when a move took place by both the nations and the Yahudim with their rulers to mistreat and stone them, they became aware of it and fled to Lustra and Derby, cities of Laconia, and the country round about. You know what, guys? When people see change coming, they are not happy. People don't like change. They like status quo. Mm -hmm. You know, unless it's going to make them wealthy or give them a new standing in the city, maybe more power. If that's coming, some people are happy. But listen, all the ones that don't get it, they're not happy. But anytime there's change and we get out of our comfort zone, mm -hmm. you get 
anger. And so you've got both the Yahudim and the Greeks. They're both stirred up right now. And so everybody's mad. Mm -hmm. I mean, they have gotten everybody mad at this point. And we're in verse 7, and they were bringing the good news there. And in Lystra, there was, a sitting, there was sitting a certain man, disabled in his feet, a cripple from his mother's womb, who had never, ever walked. And this one heard Shaul speaking, who looked intently at him, and seeing that he had belief to be healed, said with a loud voice, Stand upright on your feet. And he sprang up and began to walk. You know, this is just like the, the great miracle healing that um, it was Kepha that did it in, uh, at mm -hmm. the temple. The man had never walked. He was lame from birth. Listen, guys, lame from birth, if you were born that way, you don't have the muscles, you don't have the support system. This guy, look at it. It says he, he sprang up and began to walk. I couldn't spring up right now, and I've walked my whole life. <laughs> spring up, and, and he walked. And when the crowd saw what Shaul had done, they lifted up their voices, saying in Laconian, the mighty ones have become like men and came down to us. <laughs> so what have they just done? They're turning them into gods. Mm -hmm. Look at these gods that are down here amongst us. And they called Barnabas Zeus and Shaul. They called him Hermes since he was the chief speaker. And the priest of Zeus, being in front of their city, very pagan city here, guys, being in front of their city brought oxen and wreaths to the gates and wished to offer with the crowds. And when the emissaries Barnabas and Shaul heard this, they tore their garments and ran in among the crowd, crying out and saying, Men, why are you doing this? We also are men with the same nature as you, bringing to you the good news to turn from, from these worthless matters to the living Elohim who made the heaven and the earth and the sea and all that is in them, who in past generations allowed all the nations to walk in their own ways. Though indeed he did not leave himself without witness, doing good, giving us rain from heaven and fruit-bearing seasons, filling our hearts with foods and gladness. Even with these words, they still had a difficulty in stopping the crowds from offering to them. Guys, what had these people grown up in? Pagan. What? Pagan. Look at <laughs> it's a traditions. It's yeah. a Greek mythology, which probably was I mean, was spurred on them gods after gods because he, look, at, look at our deities. new god. Who is the master of the of the deities at that point, which would be the gods? Which That's would right. Zeus, it called it master of the deities in the Aramaic, which is interesting because. Zeus, that's how uh, Son of Zeus. Jesus come, you know, that's around where, to. Uh, that was one of the na that that was the name they gave to them when they were trying to explain who is the son of God. Well, son of Zeus, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. That's, Jesus. I, I don't know I mean, uh, you shoot Jesus. What aspect of the language would be? But you know, in Spanish, it says um, sometimes the last names will be de something. You know, of such and such, uh -huh. like they would uh, do. You know, the 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 last name would be um, <laughs> de, yeah, the, whatever the last name of Decasinto, for instance, of such and such. So you are the son of such and such. Oh wow! So Je Zeus, De of Zeus. Yep. Oh, and wow, that is kind of and cool. guys, looking at uh, and for our live streamers, we just did a study uh, this past weekend on revealing the name of the Antichrist. It was put out by Parable of the Vineyard, and I highly recommend it. I did share it on my Facebook page. Uh, I recommend it, and guys, listen, um, if some of you are not already on this walk, don't look at it, because it's, it's probably going to offend you, mm -hmm. and we're not here to offend anyone, but we are after truth, and the truth is, there were no J's in the Hebrew language, even when Yeshua walked. If you went back to the time that he walked in Jerusalem, in Jerusalem, excuse me, there were no J's, then, and you, you were going down the streets going, hey, can you tell me where Jesus is? What would they say? Who? Zeus, we don't know. <laughs> we don't know who you're talking about because his name was not Jesus. Jesus. It was either Yahshua or Yahusha, but it wasn't what we know is it was not Jesus. Okay. Um, where am I? I don't know. 17. 
Oh, uh, we, we were going to Mark 7, 8. Oh, we were? We were. <laughs> and, and actually, I'm going to start in 7, 7. <laughs> well, I couldn't. Everybody was so it excited was. and talking. Oh. And in vain do they worship me. And he's talking, this is Yahweh. In vain do they, they worship me, teaching as teachings the commands of men. The commands of men, guys. What are we studying today? Not today in here. But but what is being taught from the pulpits? Commands the of, of men. The doctrines of men, which are the commands of men. Uh, seven, but look at, look at number eight. Forsaking the command of Elohim, you hold fast to the tradition of men. Let, to, to, that's it and that's exactly what we see over here the, the men in, uh, in this Greek city were, were traditionally mm -hmm. steeped in the, the worship of their false deities, idols their yeah. deities and, and maybe they were you know, based on some of the Nephilim we don't know but there could have been a basis for all this but guys listen it's their tradition, and they could not let go. It said, even these words, they still had difficulty in stopping the crowns from offering to them. They were offering to these deities. They couldn't stop themselves. They couldn't help themselves. That's all they knew. it's their tradition. Well, even today, it's tradition. Let's go to church on Sunday. Maybe yes. Wednesday night, if you're an extra good person. <laughs> you're doing your Christmas, your Easter, your, you know, tradition. The tradition. It says, um, study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. That mm -hmm. you have to actually get in there and study it, and, and, and learn how to rightly divide it. Right, that is correct. You so, know, the three times that the churches are full <coughs> are those three times: Mother's Day, Thanksgiving, because everyone. No, Mother's Day, Christmas, and uh, Easter. Mother's Day, Christmas, and Easter. So, guys, listen. I don't celebrate Christmas, in my family. Yeah, they think I'm cuckoo. Yep. And no yeah. cocoa puffs. <laughs> so, yeah, I haven't even told my grandma that I'm not coming over yet. Oh, chicken. <laughs> <laughs> I am. <laughs> okay, so so guys, that's the traditions that we have chosen to, to stand by today is the traditions of men. Easter, this egg-laying bunny rabbit, uh, which has nothing to do with Passover. It has nothing to do with Passover. It has everything to do, to do with, with Ishtar. Ishtar. has everything to do with Ishtar and the worship of the fertility goddess. Okay, think about this. Here we tell our children, oh, Santa Claus is coming. He's going to come down the chimney, and da -da, leave cookies, all that. And then later, they learn it. There's not a Santa Claus. They've been we lied to. We tell them about <laughs> Yeshua, Jesus. Get your face and they're going to wonder here. about that too, you know, because um, here's a woman saying this. You have to put me on. <laughs> there, there she is. Here I am. But that's the truth. I mean, you if you tell them, and then they start thinking, what else have they lied to me about? I mean, I got to thinking about that. What I'd done to my own children, mm -hmm. and it's it's unsettling. It is unsettling, guys. And we did the same thing with Easter. Oh look, the Easter Bunny came, and he left all these bunnies for you. First of all, that's kind of creepy to think about you mean a eggs? bunny out there. Yeah, what did I say? Bunnies. bunnies. <laughs> I'm still thinking about chocolate bunnies. <laughs> Somebody the other night said, I want a big old chocolate bunny. I don't even want a big old chocolate bunny. <laughs> okay, let's get back, back there. Back to what we're talking about. Okay, sorry guys. Where are we? We are in uh, verse 19 of, four, of chapter 14 of Acts. Okay, but the Yahudim arrived from Antioch and Iconium, and having won over the crowds, they stoned Shaul, dragged him out of the city, thinking he was dead. Mm. Again, guys, the tribe of Judah has been blinded. Mm -hmm. Until what? The fulfillment of, of the, the number of Gentiles. And we read this this last week. But while the taught ones gathered around him, he rose up and went into the city. And on the next day, he went away with Barnabas to Derby. And having brought the good news to that city and having made many taught ones, they returned to Lustra and Iconium and Antioch, strengthening the beings of the taught ones, encouraging them to continue in the belief, and that through many pressures we have to enter mm. the reign of Elohim. Okay. And guys, I want us to look at something right now because, listen, I've heard so many people say, I thought when I came into this walk, everything was just going to be, you know, a bed of roses. Mm -mm. Guys, uh-uh. 
from the moment I came into this walk, I, I feel spears being chunked at me. Because listen, it's persecution. But look at John 15, 20. Mm -hmm. Somebody read it. Who's there? Hey. Sean, you are still turning pages, boy. Are you going to read it? Yes, I would love for you to read it. Remember the word that I said to you, a servant is not greater than his masters. If they persecuted me, they shall persecute you too. If they have guarded my word, <coughs> they would guard yours too. You did that without glasses. I'm very impressed. Yeah, they're very good. I can't see you without my glasses. Okay, so what, what Sean just read says hmm. what? If they persecute the master... They're going to persecute his followers. So, guys, listen. We are going to be persecuted. We are. And in the end times, there's going to be great persecution. Be ready to stand. Because that's what we're being built up for, is to stand during the, the, the tribulation. Yep. There's no free ticket out. No. We've been told that. You can read and read and read through there. And you're not going to find where we are given a free ticket out of the tribulation. We're saved from the last day. But we're not saved from the, the last three and a half years of tribulation. But I'm going to tell you what we are. And we read it in um, in Ezra. In the first book of Ezra this last week. What did it say? That we are. Come on. Help me. I'm trying to think. We're protected. We are protected, and not only are we protected. From the second death? No. No. No, what we would... no it's a... Worth Ezra's. Uh, we are protected, and while we are being protected, those who have persecuted us are watching us. Yes, and, and seeing. Oh, it's in my... See for... Ezra. Okay. Uh, you got it? it? It was in one and two. I think it's going to be in chapter 2 of, of the fourth book of Ezra. So while Valerie's looking that up, guys, this is important. If you didn't see our, our study on Shabbat, on the afternoon of Shabbat, it was a study of the first and second books of Ezra. It is very, very important because he tells us very specifically that he protects his, his chosen ones. Those who have what? Come on. Let me hear it. Those who have what? Who are the chosen ones? Huh? Righteousness. Righteousness. Who have, and what does righteousness mean? The covenanted. Covenanted? Following the law. That's it. Those who have followed the instructions that he has given us. Those are the ones he's going to protect, right? Valerie, did you find it? Is it like, um, be ready to the reward of the kingdom for the everlasting light shall shine upon them forever, flee the shadow of the world. Is that going to be it? I think that's part the, of it. Oh, receive the gift that is given you and be glad, giving thanks yeah, unto him that has led you to the heavenly kingdom. Arise up and stand, behold the number of those that be sealed in the feast of Yahuwah. Is this it? That's part of it. But even before that, it talks about how we are protected yeah. and how our light oh, shines. Oh, here it is. As for the servants whom I have given you, there shall not one of them perish. For I, will, is this it? I think it is. For I will no. require them from among your number. Be not weary, for when the day of trouble and heaviness comes, others shall weep and be sorrowful, but you shall be merry and have abundance. The heathen shall envy you, but they shall be able to do nothing against you, says Yahuwah. My hands shall cover you, so that your children shall not see Sheol. Be joyful, O mother, with your children, for I will deliver you, says Yahuwah. Did y'all hear that? Mm -hmm. that is, Guys, uh, listen, that is a promise to the ones who are being obedient to his commandments. Who Listen, mm -hmm. not just being obedient. What, what does he say? Guard. Those who guard. Thanks, Dennis. Those who guard my commandments. Guard. It means you're willing to fight for his commandments. The Maccabees were willing to fight mm -hmm. to not be forced to eat mm -hmm. unclean meat. Right. Which the meat was not food. The meat that they were being forced to eat was pork. And, and she had to food. watch. Her Should sons watch, be tortured? I believe it was it was five, six, or seven of her sons be and tortured they all and killed. Each other. Uh -huh. They watched each, each and other. She was so. the last one. This seven. is a verse that goes along with what she was saying. Galatians six nine. It says, "And let us not be weary in well doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not." That's right. That's a good one. If we faint not, so we've got to guys. Listen, we have to stand firm, and that's what he said. Our feet have to be fast. In the word. We have to be That's it. glued into the word and standing. And what does he say? Stand and then keep on standing. And that's all of us. 
That's a, that's the way we get through this. You can't do it on your own. Uh -uh. It's him. It's his grace. Gives us strength. Listen, guys, it is a grace mm -hmm. that he has offered to everyone. Only by that grace can you stand and continue to stand and get that blessing, that righteous blessing in front of those who have persecuted yeah. you, who are looking on in envy. How sad would that be? Mm. So it's in all those times we feel like giving up because, I mean, it wouldn't mention weary if you weren't just... If you weren't going to be weary. And striving and mm -hmm. almost not seeing the ends of the And sight. that's the word striving. That's it. Say. And we are striving. Mm -hmm. We are striving to do what's right. So I like that. Um, <coughs> it's so easy to give up. I mean, to get tired and <coughs> fall by the wayside. I'm trying to see if I can put, pull this together. Um, Sure you the can. word uh, the turn verse around. that talks about um, faith, and you uh, and you have to ask, you know, what it what is faith? It's like having a title deed because it's something that is unseen. It's Hebrews uh, one eleven one. Faith is a thing, substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So yes. faith is like a title deed. It's like me handing yes. Valerie um paperwork on a house that she hasn't seen before but she knows it exists because i have the documentation there to show her that's good so faith is like that you yeah know, it's the substance of something we haven't seen but we know it's there mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's like faith in everything that he says he will do that's it we haven't yeah. seen we didn't see the sea part we didn't see the quail come down mm -mm. you know they've seen that but they still failed to believe really uh, we didn't we, see his resurrected body either. It's, it's Yet we still believe. Faith of yes. The things that we didn't see that, I mean, we have to believe in that. That's right. That it's going to be true. Mm -hmm. His word good. is true. See, guys, don't y'all want to just come and join us here? <laughs> we have so much fun. We have so much fun. And I'm learning to be a camera woman, mm. camera person. <laughs> okay. That was good. Mm -hmm. Anybody want to add anything else to it? Mm -mm. Okay, and guys, listen, we also stand with each other. That's right. As a family, we stand because we, we help hold each other up. When one is, is ready to, like Misty said, it's so easy to give up. That's what the when, word says. When one is ready to just walk away, it is up to all of us to hold them up and, and keep them standing and keep us together because we don't want one to perish. We don't want, to, want one to walk away He's, no matter what. He says that. He said, if you see your brother going to the fire, you, you help. What? Or you'll be a Your blood will be on your hands. There you go. <laughs> Their, blood Their, blood. Their blood will be on your hands. Somebody's. Yeah. <laughs> somebody's blood is going to be on somebody's hands. You're going to have somebody's blood on yeah. your hands. <laughs> Can't always remember everything. But you were close. <laughs> I was. Okay. We are now. We've made it to 23. Oh. We may only get through 15 mm. today. I was I was okay. really mm. pushing for 16. 23 or 14? 23 or 14. And having appointed elders in every assembly, having prayed with fasting, they committed them to the master in whom they had believed. And guys, you know, that's important. There needs to be leaders in every group, right? Mm -hmm. Leaders that can come together and talk about any situation that needs to be handled. And they did this through fasting and through prayer. Everything they did, they did through fasting and prayer. And having passed through Pisidia, they came to Pamphylia. <laughs> and having spoken the word and purged, they went down to Atalia. And from there, they sailed to Antioch, where they had been committed to the favor of Elohim for the work which they had completed. And having arrived and having gathered together the assembly, they related all that Elohim had done with them, and that he had opened the door of belief to the nations. And they remained there a long time with the taught ones. Hmm. You know, guys, the taught ones were those who believed in the way. They were the Nazarene, and they stayed there a long time with them. Listen, after being in the mission field and being stoned and persecuted, they needed to be built back up. And, and they that's endured. The, they endured. They and endured. that's the hard part because they had been, I mean, all kinds of things had happened to them. Yes. And they endured and kept going and doing what they'd been called to do. Yes. Yes. That's hard. And, and it's not easy, guys. It's mm -hmm. not an easy walk. This mm -hmm. is not an easy walk. If it was, everyone out there would be doing it. Right. D d listen, if I really believe that we got a free ticket out of it just by saying I believe and that's it, I'd be the first one to jump on that train. 
but but listen i sorry it's not it's not that way nowhere in scripture does it say that except in Shaul's writings and we're going to see in a little bit that Shaul was talking about the Talmud I mean he you already saw where he he said uh I studied in my father's traditions we read that earlier there's a good one along on that line it's second Timothy 2 3 through 5 it says thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Yeshua Mm. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, mm. that he may please him who has chosen chosen him to be a soldier. And if a man also strive for masteries, yet is not crowned except he strive lawfully. Yes, mm. that's so good. I like that. Yes, lawfully in the Torah, mm -hmm. striving in Torah, and not not getting tangled up in all the little affairs. The stuff. The road. You know, it's the stuff little, that don't matter. The issues that you that they don't, don't matter. They're like the physical things. They're distractions. Mm -hmm. That's right, and that's what a lot of stuff is. Mm -hmm. It's just a, a, a distraction in yes. this world and not of it. This is Paul out there speaking the instruction of our Father, yes. Yahweh. I mean, it's His instruction. It's His instructions found in Torah. <laughs> And Yeshua even says he didn't say anything the Father hasn't told him. Yes. There, he is, Yeshua is the instruction. He is the Torah, the, the, the Word made flesh. But it comes from the Father. And, you know, it's our instructions on how to live. That's what the whole It's our instructions on how to be the people that he wants to live with forever. That's <laughs> it. We're not gonna live with just anybody. And That's through it. them instructions, if we follow them, like baking a cake, <laughs> it's either gonna be yucky or it's gonna be great. He wants to live right. with those that follow his instructions. That's right. He wants his cake to be perfect. Uh, <coughs> well, who has he got at his right hand right now? Yeshua. Okay. Our our. He, he he's like our our lawyer up there. He's he's like our cheerleader up there. He's like those are our, those are my kids down there. But so we're gonna have to be like him to That's be right. there to, for him to cheer yeah. us home. Yeah. Yes. Paul says they're his instructions. Oops. The master Yahweh. Sorry. I mean, our, and he never changes. He's the same yes, yesterday, he. today, and forever. So how how long uh, is he the same? Forever. Forever. I changed not, he said, uh, Malachi. Uh, so I don't think his instructions have changed. Nothing about him changed. I know they haven't changed because all so. the proof that I see says they have not. Okay, we're fixing to go forward. He says I don't like We are going to get through with chapter 15. Woo, I hope. <laughs> oh, yeah, we will. Okay, we're in 15.1, and we're, we're about to get to that question that we've asked today uh -oh. about the physical... Mm. <sighs> Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. And all the guys are mm -hmm. wincing here. <laughs> Fifteen get, one. Everybody gets up and leaves. Yeah, yeah, us girls, we don't care, right? <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> what, what's the big thing about a little piece of skin? <laughs> I don't know what you're so upset I about. <laughs> Circumcision, guys, is what we're fixing to talk about. Oh. In fifteen one, and certain men came down from Yehuda, which was uh the tribe of Judah, and were teaching the brothers. And here's what they were teaching, because they were what? Jews that were from the tribe of Jehuda, of Judah. Unless you are circumcised according to the practice of Moshe, you are unable to be saved. Hmm. This is what they're teaching. So when Shaul and Barnabas had no small dissension, they had a pretty big dispute with them over this. And disputed with them, they arranged for Shaul and Barnabas and certain others of them to go up to Jerusalem to the emissaries and elders about this question. And this is a big question, guys. Today, even today, it, even in the Hebraic Roots movement, it's a huge question. Some say that you have to be. Some say that you do not the have to be. Scripture says circumcise them on the eighth day. That's the eighth day yes. of birth. After that... Maybe it's put on the heart. I don't. I mean, that's where I, I'm glad you I, I have that trouble up. with that. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. But uh, uh, I'm just gonna stop right there. No, but but you know what? That is so true. 
in Leviticus, it tells us that when a baby boy is born, on the eighth day, when vitamin K is the highest in the body, the, the vitamin that causes the, the coagulating of the blood, that at that time is the time that every baby boy is to be circumcised on that day. But listen, how many men have gone through life and they don't do things as they used to. And there aren't, I mean, a lot of men are, have, have grown up, they aren't circumcised. And so at that point, it becomes a big question. Mm -hmm. uh, do you or don't you? I know that MTOI or, or Steve Berkson says, you know, you, you have to be circumcised. But guys, I don't see anywhere in scripture. That becomes legalistic it, to a point. To a Maybe. Point I mean, I don't know, but but it's the spiritual side of it that we really need to get the concept of. And that's what we're going to see here, mm -hmm. because what we're going to look at is when they went back to Jerusalem, because you've got Shaul and Barnabas saying, no, and, and I'm going to tell you something. What they were teaching, unless you are circumcised according to the practice of Moshe, you are unable to be saved. First of all, they've got it backwards, okay? Mm -hmm. If you're saved and your heart it tells you at some point in your walk that you need to be circumcised. What is this circumcision for? It does is a piece of skin going to save you? Uh -uh. But what is it for? What is it a sign of? A it's a sign covenant. that you're covenanted. Mm -hmm. So it's a sign between you and Abba. Between you and Abba. It's between you and Abba. So um, this and this is what Barnabas and Shaul are saying. They're they're like no. We don't want these people to have to be <coughs> circumcised. A lot of them don't even know if they want to believe. Even uh, Timothy. He said Timothy wasn't even drawn to this. So let's, let's read and let's see what the Sanhedrin or the, the elders of the way came up with. We're in verse 2, and I think I've already read this. So when Shaul and Barnabas had no small dissension and dispute with them, they arranged for Shaul and Barnabas and certain others of them to go up to Jerusalem to the emissaries and elders about this question. So being on their way by the assembly, they passed through Phoenicia and Shamoron, relating the conversion of the nations, and they were causing great joy to all the brothers. Can you imagine that, guys, being told that, you know, outside of Israel, so many of the house of Israel are beginning to convert to the way. There had to be great joy, lots of enthusiasm going on there, right? Mm -hmm. And having arrived in Jerusalem, they were received by the assembly and the emissaries and the elders, and they reported all that Elohim had done with them. And some of the believers who belonged to the sect of the Pharisees and believed, and I'm adding this in here, believed in what? The Talmud, mm -hmm. okay, I want you to understand. The Pharisees are the ones who believed in the Talmud, which was written by the who the Pharisees and the rabbis. Mm -hmm. and I stand to be corrected on that. Um, and some of the believers who belonged to the sect of the Pharisees rose up saying, it is necessary to circumcise them and to command them to keep the Torah of Moshe. And the emissaries and elders came together to look into this matter. And when there had been much dispute, Kepha, which is Peter, rose up and said to them, Men, brothers, you know that a good while ago Elohim chose among us that by, by my mouth the nations should hear the word of the good news and believe. So by Peter's mouth, the nations or the Gentiles are the ones that are not covenanted would hear the good news and believe. And remember the first time that, that he went to one not, not covenanted was who? Was it Cyrus? the Ethiopian, to his family? Mm -hmm. Yes. And Elohim, who knows the heart, bore witness to them by giving them the set-apart spirit as also to us and made no distinction between <coughs> us and them, cleansing their hearts by belief. Now then, why do you try Elohim by putting a yoke on the neck of the taught ones, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? But through the favor of the Master, Yeshua Messiah, we trust to be saved in the same way as they. And all the crowd was silent, and were listening to Barnabas and Shaul declaring how many miracles and wonders Elohim did among the nations through them. And after they were silent, Yaakov, which is James, which is the head of the emissaries, which was also the brother of Yeshua, answered saying, Men, brothers, listen to me. So he has been sitting there listening to everything that was going on, all this dispute. And he said, hold on. 
give her to me. Shimon has declared how Elohim first visited the nations to take out of them a people for his name. And the words of the prophet agree with this, as it has been written, After this I shall return and rebuild the booth of David, which has fallen down, and I shall rebuild its ruins, and I shall set it up, so that the remnant of mankind shall seek Yahweh, even all the nations on whom my name has been called, says Yahweh, who is doing all of this, who has made this known from of old. And I want us to look at this verse in, in the area where it came from, which is Amos chapter 9. <clears throat> and um, start at nine. Who's there? Valerie, you want to read it? No, no. But I didn't know. No? Complete. Okay. Unless you want me to read it in here now. Okay, I'm going to read it mm -hmm. out of the scriptures then. Um, for look, I am commanding, and I shall sift the house of Israel among all the nations as one sifts with a sieve, yet not a grain falls to the ground equally. He's sifting them equally. So the house of Israel is going to be sifted and thrown everywhere. All the sinners of my people are going to die by the sword. Those who are saying evil does not overtake us nor meet us. In that day I shall raise up the booth of David, which has fallen down, and I shall rep repair its breaches and raise up its ruins, and I shall build it as in the days of old, so that they possess the remnant of Edom and all the nations in whom my name is called, declares Yahweh, who does this. So guys, do you see the fullness of that verse? He's talking to the house of Israel. Mm -hmm. What chapter what, that was what? Amos what? Amos 9, and it was actually 9. 9, 9? Mm -hmm. 9, 9 through 12. And Edom is Esau. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and we're back in uh, chapter 15, verse 19. Therefore, I judge that we should not trouble those from among the nations, the uncovenanted ones, who are turning to Elohim. Guys, they're just now turning to him. Their backs have been towards Elohim. They're just now turning back around to him. And the first thing you're going to do is say, oh, sorry, but before you finish turning, you're going to have to have that snippet of skin cut off before you can come any farther. No. So they're saying, we should not trouble those from among the nations who are returning, re, or who are turning, excuse me, not returning, are turning to Elohim, but that we write to them to abstain from the defilements of idols and from whoring and from what is strangled and from blood. And all of this, guys, everything that they're, they're writing to them to stop doing, these are pagan practices that were going on in the temples. Mm -hmm. Okay, these are all pagan things. The whoring, the the eating of the uh, food that had been, you know, um, sacrificed to the idols, and uh, they were eating blood. I mean, they were doing everything that Yah had said in the beginning. Don't do these. You're my children. Don't do them. So this is what they're telling them: stop doing the pr pagan practices. And from ancient generations, Moshe has in every city those proclaiming him being read in the congregations every Shabbat. Then it seemed good to the emissaries and elders with all the assembly to send chosen men from among them to Antioch with Shaul and Barnaba and Yehuda being called Barsaba and Silas, leading men among the brothers. Having written by their hand this, the emissaries and the elders and the brothers to the brothers who are of the nations in Antioch and Syria and Kalikia, greetings. Since we have heard that some who went out from us have troubled you with words unsettling your lives to whom we have no command, it seemed good, good to us, having become one mind, to send chosen men to you with our beloved Barnaba and Shaul, men who have given up their lives for the name of our master, Yeshua Messiah. We have therefore sent Yehuda and Silas, who are also confirming this by word of mouth. For it seemed good to the set-apart spirit and to us to lay upon you no greater burden than these necessities, that you abstain from what is offered to, to idols and blood and what is strangled and whoring. If you keep yourselves from these, you shall do well and be strong. So what are they doing? 
Guys, you're giving them baby steps. Mm -hmm. Listen, as you first start taking, and it's the same way that we are, we're doing, all of us, you can't just one day turn back to Yah and do everything that is in the scriptures. You can't do it. If you did, it would be a miracle. I mean, it would definitely be of Yah because baby, by baby steps, <coughs> I stopped eating what was not food. By baby steps, I stopped doing the things that were not of Yah, the traditions of men. It is baby steps, and it is a walk. That's why it's That's called it. a walk. It's our walk, and we do it because why? We love him. I like that. Mm -hmm. We do it because we love Yahweh, and we love his son, Yeshua. We love them, and that's why we do it because this is what we were made to do. Mm -hmm. We weren't made to do all the things that were spoken against in this book. We were made to do everything that's in here, and by through our love for him, we walk it out. And listen, through your love for him at some point, you may wish to be circumcised, but they are not commanding that here. They are saying, start out with baby steps, and if somewhere along the line you decide that you need to, do it. Let me see. I think we're going to get through 15. Mm -hmm. Yes, we're going to get through. Yes, we are going to get through 15. I'm, I'm rolling that. Okay. He says, be strong. They, therefore, being sent off, went to Antioch, and having gathered the crowd together, they delivered the letter. And having read it, they rejoiced over its encouragement. And that had to be encouraging. You know, guys, they just had the Yahudim, or the tribe of Judah, come to them and say, look, guys, before you can go any further in the belief, you're going to have to be circumcised. That's what the Yahudim had just come to them and say. Well, it confused them. It totally confused them. Because here... Yeah, you want us to, I mean, don't you know they're like, you want us to do what? Yeah. You want us to, what? No, I don't think so. Okay, and having read it, they rejoiced over its encouragement. And Yehuda and Silas, being themselves also prophets, encouraged the brothers with many words and strengthened them. And having spent some time, they were sent back in peace from the brothers to the emissaries. But it seemed good to Silas to remain. And Shaul and Barnabas continued in Antioch, teaching and bringing with many others also the good news, the word of Yahweh. And after some days, Shaul said to Barnabas, Let us go back and visit our brothers in every city where we have proclaimed the word of Yahweh and see how they are. Don't you know he was excited mm -hmm. to get back there? You know, I want to go back and see how are they doing? Are that are they are they still keeping the word? Have they grown? Are they fasting, you know, every every other week? Or Don't you know they were anxious to see how mm -hmm. they were doing? And Barnabas Barnaba professed to take with them Yochanan called Marcos. But Shaul thought it not fit to take with them the one who withdrew from them in Pamphylia and had not gone with them to, to do the work. And again, guys, that's in Acts 13, 13. We read it in the beginning of the study today. And this is Barnabas' cousin, John mm -hmm. Mark. Mm -hmm. and, and this is so sad here. So that sharp feeling therefore came to be so that they parted one from another. And so Barnabas took Marcus and sailed to Cyprus. And Shaul chose Silas and went off, being committed by the brothers to the favor of Elohim. And he went through Syria and Cilicia, strengthening strengthening the, the assemblies. So guys, listen, what you have to know is that who was Shaul? What was he doing? What did he go to Damascus for? To persecute the, uh, what, the Nazarenes. The men, the women, the children of the Nazarene. Mm -hmm. And he went with a letter of authority saying, saying that he had the power to bring every one of them back to Jerusalem. This is who he was. So let me tell you, before they would even allow him into their group, somebody had to vouch for him. And, and it was <coughs> Barnaba. It was Barnaba who did this. If you look at 11, Acts 11.25, 11, <clears throat> and it, I mean, we go through so many studies each week that it's easy to forget what we just studied last week. But in 11.25, it said, um, then Barnaba went to to Tarsus to seek Shaul, and having found him, he brought him to Antioch. And it came to be that for an entire year they came together in the assembly and taught large numbers. And the taught ones were called Messianics first in Antioch. So Barnabas went, he searched out Saul, Saul, Shaul, and he brought him back to Antioch. Why? To teach him how to teach. Mm -hmm. 
He's teaching him how to teach what the, the emissaries are teaching. And so he brought him in. He brought him into the apostles. He made them, He made him acceptable. And then over here in, in uh, 15, I mean, we see where over, over asking for John Mark to go with them, there's, they split over that. Over what? Well, it says, um, a sharp feeling therefore came to be so that they parted one from another. Hmm. So they were angry at each other mm -hmm. when they left. It's Barnabas agreement. Barnabas was hurt because, you know, Shaul didn't want to take his cousin, John Mark, with him. Uh, yeah. Because John Mark had abandoned him. Mm -hmm. and, and again, we don't know why John Mark did that. He I mean, he understand. should not have, but he did. And listen, do we have to forgive? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, we've got to forgive. You want to hang on to something? You can hang on to it, but is it going to do you any good? Mm -mm. No, it's that not. It hurts you more than the other one. It will make you sick. Being angry at someone, holding a grudge against someone will make you sick before it makes them sick. Mm -hmm. I can promise you that, right? Oh, yeah. So, do we have any questions, additions? Mm. Look, we finished and it's not even 3 o'clock. Wow. I'm going to pat myself that on the back. <laughs> huh? Oh, that's not what? And uh, Bonnie and Robert had his coat. <laughs> what? Oh, that was good today. Was doing that for yeah, the word is good, isn't it? Mm. So it explains itself. It does. It really does. If you dig into it and try to find what backs it up. This is funny. I wasn't prepared to go through 16, so it's a good thing we stopped at 15. <laughs> okay. okay. Which one did you say is John Mark? John Mark is uh, Barnabas' cousin. Yeah. And his name is not here. Who? No, they, yeah, it's here. John, As it's in John. John Mark. No, it's, it's, it's Johanna. It's okay. Yochanan, <laughs> and it's also Marcos. So his yeah. name is uh, Yochanan Marcos, John Mark. And that could be confusing. It can be confusing. So in the it beginning is. it was talking about when it said Johannan, because it never said Marcos. Yochanan, it's Mark. it was John Mark. John Mark. Johanna. It was John Mark who was mm -hmm. with him in the beginning. It wasn't the other yeah. John. There's yeah. a lot of Johns in this mm -hmm. these mm -hmm. stories. Do y'all have anything that, that you want to talk sure about from here? I think I'm it's lost. been fascinating. I think just the study of the circumcision <laughs> like and the few things that were even required of the new believers. Not, listen, guys, you start putting requirements on people and what's going to happen? They're going to run. Yeah. But, ooh, you know what? More than running away, Dennis, you're right. You're setting them up to fail. You are absolutely right. So oh, really you could put that rather than really setting all the pare the these laws and parameters is it, up is for it, the is people. Is that the same as this one? Uh, this is in the 15 and 10 and 15. Now then, why do you try, excuse me, why do you try Elohim by putting a yoke on the neck of the tall ones, which neither our fathers nor we could have, were able to bear? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Adding stuff to it. Adding stuff to when it. That was, a, to that was the child mood. To the, the faith. Uh -huh. Is this something I want to do, let me, let me look into it a little bit, you know, and then yes. decide. Yeah. Uh, don't, you have to do all of this before you can even come into well, you debate whether or not you, it's like right. signing a contract. You like to know what you're getting into before you sign a contract. Mm -hmm. Need to find, read yeah. the fine print. I like the way Misty put it. It's like selling a house that you've never, I like that. To, to someone that's never seen it. I want to see the house. I'm going to walk in it. I want to see if my furniture is going to fit. Let's see how I like the style. So listen, walking into a new faith, a new belief system, they've got, to, we, we all have to take baby steps. Our guys, you can be overwhelmed. You can be, and, and this would be Tris for you and to Brittany. Y'all are new to this, and it can be overwhelming. Mm -hmm. Don't let it be. Mm -hmm. It is a very easy walk. It's so simple, and it's so easy. But, but by it. a lot of the words that we use so and a lot of the times that we are talking about the laws and the festivals, don't let it get confusing because it's a simple walk, and that's what it is. It's just a daily walking with him the way he's asked us to do. A festival is daddy. beautiful. If you had never been to one, go! It is. The best. Oh, <laughs> Amazing. Listen, listen, Valerie and I were talking. So uh, Hanukkah starts on the 22nd of December. So we're going to have a Hanukkah party <coughs> and probably on the, the 25th when most of our families will be far, far away. We're going to come together and we're just going to have a good time together. Mm -hmm. we did so that, we'll see that. Was it last year or the year before? Uh, 
Uh, y'all never did it last year. Okay, it was year before. Year we had before so, last. We had so much fun. Year, we did the movies. Oh, we, we, we had, had so, so much, much fun, fun that the we time went games. by too fast. It was our. It was on Shabbat. Boogie. We had a very short study. Was it on Shabbat? It was on Shabbat. Well, it was on Christmas too. It was Christmas yeah. in Shabbat. Everybody else was. Everybody else went to Christmas, and mm -hmm. we came together with our family, Mess and we ate. I think we cooked steaks. <laughs> We did. So, uh -huh. We did. We yeah. did. That was a good thing. So, um, to, to our live streamers, we want, we want to thank you for joining us today. And we're going to send you away with a prayer. Let's let's bless this, this time. And thank Yahweh for his the food that he provided us today. Jim's pen. crispy fried chicken is always good, isn't it? Yes. Yes. <laughs> My stomach likes it. So, uh, let's just pray. Abba, we just thank you. Oh, Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your truth. We thank you for your Savior, our Savior, our Messiah, who you sent into this world to allow us salvation. Father, thank you for your grace and your mercy to allow us to walk out the walk. And Father, we know. Father, I'm asking you right now that, that you will show those who are just coming into this understanding that it is a walk. Mm -hmm. And it can be a slow walk. But Abba, bring them on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> bring them into this walk and let them start the walk. Because it is beautiful and it is the most freeing thing that I've ever in my life uh, gone through. To be free and rid of everything mm -hmm. uh, of man and totally committed unto Yahweh. Okay. So, Father, we just thank you for that. We thank you for the freedom that mm -hmm. you have given to your children. Abba, we thank you for the love that you give us, and we thank you for this day that, that you have allowed us to come together. Thank you for the food you provided for us, and Abba, just bless everyone in this room, and bless our live streamers, mm -hmm. Father, the ones who are picking up uh, the word and beginning to study it. Mm -hmm. Abba, we're asking you will open eyes and ears and hearts, beat away those crusty, hard hearts that have, have mm -hmm. so formed. Father, we know that so many people have been hurt. Yeah. through religion. We know that. Um, in fact, many in this room have been hurt through religion. Break away that crust and, Father, allow a healing to begin. Mm -hmm. And, uh, Father, we're just asking for a new relationship with you mm -hmm. to start for all of our live streamers, all of them, Abba. And uh, let, it, let them just be super blessed. Uh, your word tells us, as we read in Ezra today, that all of those being obedient to your Torah guarding your Torah, all those being righteous. Thank you, Valerie. Mm -hmm. Those are the ones that you're going to protect during the end times. Abba, <laughs> let us walk that walk. Let us not walk to the left mm -hmm. nor to the right, but stay within the parameters that you have set before us. Mm -hmm. And Abba, as we as we veer off, guide us back on gently, Abba, gently. Uh, some of us need a little bit harder mm -hmm. slap, but, but <laughs> gen gently for mm -hmm. most of us, Abba. And we just praise you this day mm -hmm. in the precious, precious name of our Savior and our Messiah and our soon coming King, Yeshua HaMashiach. We pray these things. Amen. 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 And amen. amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. And uh, we look forward to seeing you on Shabbat. Mm -hmm. uh, we will have our regular Torah portion this coming Shabbat. And in the afternoon, we will uh, lead off with Ezra, the third and fourth chapter, and maybe the fifth. I don't know. But Ezra has been an amazing study. Just the first two books are incredible. But we're getting into the really good part. So it's another one of my favorite books. So for everybody, we say what? Shalom. Shalom. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> <laughs> <I like 'em. laughs>